Hi, so we are back at the crime scene and I want to introduce you to uh, another common tool that is used both in the laboratory as well as at the crime scene that is used to identify and then help collect evidence. Now, we used um, a flashlight earlier to visualize this swipe of red-brown staining on the table. So we used it at an oblique angle to better visualize this potential blood stain that we are going to see. Uh, now, the flashlight can, of course, also be used to look at your other pieces of evidence, which could be of interest. Hey, look, there is a piece of trace evidence, this pink fiber. Let's take a look more, see what else we can find. Ooh, another piece of pink fiber. And then it looks like there's some staining on this chair. Well, the flashlight is great, but a flashlight only produces white light, which only has so much power, if you will. The use of an alternate light source, which you've probably seen on TV represented as a blue light or a black light or a UV laser um, that's often used with these, uh, you know, really cool, orange glasses, these barrier filters. This is the alternate light source. This is the useful tool that I'm talking about here. And this produces a different wavelength of light that will help the scientist better visualize evidence. Now this particular alternate light source produces a blue light. Other alternate light sources can uh, uh, produce different wavelengths of light, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and use this blue light and demonstrate how much more detail you can see at a crime scene with just this different wavelength of light. So if you see here, this uh, trace evidence, this pink fiber, this fluoresces, but this white-ish area here is of interest. It looks a lot larger and potentially looks like some type of pattern that we didn't see before with just the flashlight. And as we keep looking along the chair, we'll notice some other staining. Now this is potentially blood. It looks kind of reddish brown, but the one thing I want to point out is that this blood or this dark stain does not fluoresce under an alternate light source. Rather, it quenches the fluorescence. So unlike what you see on TV when you hear someone say the blood fluoresced, this is not the case. But this is also something that may not be visible with just white light. Now, as I said, there are a lot of different types of alternate light sources and a lot of different uses for them. And that's something we will talk about when we go back to the lab. So let's head back there right now and talk some more about the alternate light source. Hi, we are back in our laboratory area. And in this segment, we're going to take a closer look at alternate light sources. And as you saw at the crime scene, an alternate light source can be used to visualize latent or nearly invisible evidence. Uh, and also what you saw at the crime scene, there can be uh, different types of alternate light sources that can be used. Um, these uh, alternate light sources here are two examples of handheld devices that produce one wavelength of light. There are other devices that are larger and they're still portable, but a little bit more um, cumbersome to use that will generate other wavelengths of light. So blue wavelength is somewhere in between 350 nanometers plus. There are also other light, alternate light sources that will have filters that will generate um, in the infrared range and as low as in the um, 200 nanometer range, which can be useful for looking at latent prints that have been treated with a fluorescent dye. But what we're gonna focus on here is the use of a handheld alternate light source that produces blue light. This is a very affordable uh, tool. And we're going to first visually look at this lovely t-shirt that I have. 
that I purposely made so I'm not this much of a slob in, in real life. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on this. Okay, there's a lot of staining. There's this kind of orangey staining here. We have some ink, um, maybe some green ink here. There is some pink marker here. We have something red brown, maybe it's blood, maybe it's chocolate, I don't know. And as, as we look uh, further on down the shirt, we have some more of this orangey stuff here and some ink. And I don't know, you know, there's just, there's a lot of stuff on this shirt but there's also more than meets the eye. So using an alternate light source can help you visualize um, materials that will fluoresce under that particular wavelength of light. And in this case, what we're looking for would be biological materials. There are certain biological materials, uh, such as saliva and urine, which will fluoresce underneath of blue light. Now, as we talked about at the crime scene, TV shows that blood can also fluoresce. And um, as we saw at the crime scene also, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, blood is actually um, absorbs or quenches that fluorescence and that blood will look darker against the substrate that it is on. So let's take a look at this t-shirt using the alternate light source to see if there are any stains we're possibly missing. So I am going to be putting on my protective orange glasses. And the reason these are orange is uh, because these orange glasses will filter out the blue light and allows me to visualize the fluorescence that is being produced by the interaction of this particular wavelength of light with these substances. So as we turn the light on, holy moly cow, you can see that this visible orangey stain fluoresces. Okay, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that this is some type of biological material? Well, not unless you cut wing sauce oil as biological material. <laughs> Uh, so just kind of showing you as an example that not everything that fluoresces is going to be of import or probative in your uh, case or in research. So looking more at the item underneath of the fluorescent light, ooh, we see here there is a fluorescent stain. I'm going to take away the light here a little bit and visually, I'm not really seeing much of a stain. So this demonstrates the light back on that there is something here that could be of forensic interest. We look here on this dark block. We also see that there is some type of off-white crusty type of material. This could be indicative of a biological fluid which will fluoresce under uh, UV light. Now this stain here, um, I know it's blood because I put it there. Again, you're seeing it's not fluorescing. It's actually, you can see it, but it's not fluorescing, okay? Now look at, oh wow, look at this here. We have this long stain here that is fluorescing. But again, I'm going to turn the light off and looking at it visually, we're not really seeing that bright of a stain, if you will. We can see closer that something is there, but it's not as evident as it is underneath of the alternate light source. And again, flipping the shirt over, we're seeing some additional stains that could be of importance, but we're also seeing some um, visual stains, such as this um, orangey stain here, which is fluorescing as well. So again, just because it fluoresces doesn't mean that it's biological in origin, nor does it necessarily mean that it's of importance to a forensic case. 
What you'll also notice is that we can see some other um, stains here that fluoresce. That again, we take this off and they are not that visible and actually they're almost whiter than the um, actual substrate themselves. Now this here is an example of bleach. So there are a lot of things that can fluoresce, even under the alternate light source. Um, bleach and cleaning supplies can fluoresce, uh, as you can see, various inks, <laughs> chicken wing sauce, <laughs> in addition to biological fluids. Um, so it can be important for you as the analyst to be aware of that. Now, if you're looking to see what types of biological fluids will fluoresce, we're going to take a common accessory uh, that, that, you know, the trend started in 2020 and is continuing on into 2021. How long? I don't know. Um, saliva can be a very important piece of forensic evidence. And oftentimes, saliva will not show up as fluorescent as, say, another type of uh, biological fluid. But because these face masks are in such close proximity to the mouth, we can see that we're getting a nice fluorescence with this face mask. So this will enable the scientist to sample a more specific area to test for saliva, then say cutting this in, cutting a larger area and maybe not getting that target area that you want to test. Okay. We take a look at these shoes, normal shoes, nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> And if we look at these, these are also fluorescing. Again, perhaps this is not biological fluid. We can also see here that there could be some element of a pattern that could be present when we look at it with the alternate light source. Now turning the light source off, and looking at it with just our naked eye, we're not seeing that same level of detail. So as you can see, the alternate light source is a very useful tool. And it's useful not only for the detection of biological fluids in serological analysis, but it's also, also useful in different areas of the crime laboratory or different areas in which you might want to do an eye cure. Um, areas such as trace analysis, um, different types of fibers will fluoresce differently. In question document analysis, um, question document examiners will use uh, light different, of different wavelengths to look at the different types of inks to determine if a uh, document has been altered or not. It's also used in latent prints, as I mentioned, um, in um, addition to a fluorescent dye to help visualize latent prints even more. And lastly, it's also used in forensic photography with all different wavelengths of light. One example you see is here. <laughs> this could be considered forensic photography. The videographer here is using the orange barrier filter to show you what the fluorescence looks like. That is done in the crime lab and at the crime scene as well. Infrared light, a different wavelength of light, can also be used in photography to demonstrate um, the presence or absence of um, gunshot residue or blood when it is against um, a darkly patterned type of substrate. And it can also be used uh, to look at subcutaneous or under the skin bruising. So, 
We've talked about this powerful little tool, which again, can be used either this small or if you wanna size up, you can do that as well. And we have one more test that we are going to talk about, which I've mentioned, and that will be latent prints. So let's go back to our crime scene and see what we can do with latent print collection.